in 1917, Einstein realized that his equation of general relativity implied an end of time. He couldn't accept that, so he went back to his equation and modified it. This, in his words, was the biggest blunder of his life. But was it a blunder? I'll get back to that in a minute. First, let me tell you why Einstein modified his equations. Roughly, Einstein's gravity, as he first wrote it, curves positively the whole space-time the universe is in. This means that the space-time trajectories of all objects in the universe should be curving towards one another. And if all objects curve towards one another, or at some point in the future, they should all crush back down into one another, hence leading to a dramatic end of the universe, sometimes called the Big Crunch. Einstein could not accept that. He believed that the universe could not end. He believed that the universe was static, eternal. So instead of trusting his newborn theory and predicting the end of the universe, Einstein modified it and introduced a negative curvature term, which he called the cosmological constant. This cosmological constant would counter the effects of gravity on very large scales. Now that in itself is a bit weird, especially coming from Einstein, but that's worse. In 1922, Alexandra Friedman submitted a paper with a cosmological solution to the original equations of general relativity. Einstein harshly criticized it, claiming that it was flawed. It took Einstein almost a year and several letters and discussions to realize that his criticisms were unfounded. He retracted his criticisms as he publicly and fully acknowledged the mathematical validity of Friedman's solution. However, Einstein's unpublished drafts show that he still rejected the physical reality. Friedman's defense is quite puzzling as well. He argued that the point of his work was only to give additional mathematical insight into general relativity, not to suggest that his equation had anything to do with our actual universe. Yes, he was a mathematician. Fortunately, then came George Lemaitre. Lemaitre en français. George Lemaitre's particularity was to be both a priest and a world-class physicist. In 1927, by studying the redshift of distant galaxies, he concluded that the universe was expanding. Better than that, by turning the clock back and by cleverly involving all at once thermodynamics, quantum mechanics and general relativity, Lemaitre would suggest that the entire universe originated from a small, primitive quantum of energy. Thereby, Lemaitre rediscovered Friedman's solution. However, this time, Lemaitre was actually arguing that this solution, which predicted both a Big Bang and a Big Crunch, was actually describing a universe. Lemaitre's insight was amazing. It's often said that his religious belief had helped him get there. I don't know about that. His physics was pretty solid. But it is possible that Lemaitre's religion has helped him avoid the dead-end philosophy that the physicist of Istanbul completely stuck in. In particular, despite Lemaitre's clever arguments, Einstein and the other physicists of that time didn't accept Lemaitre's ideas. Nevertheless, in the 1940s, the theory of an expanding universe slowly gained acceptance. At last, Einstein acknowledged that he shouldn't have added the cosmological constant just to make his theory fit his philosophical beliefs. He reckoned that adding the cosmological constant was the biggest blunder of his life. But was it a blunder? On one hand, it's a basic fix to match the dominant belief of the scientific community back then. On the other hand, you can also regard Einstein's blunder as a characterization of all the sensible theories of gravity. And this characterization would turn out to be extremely useful to modern science. Recent more detailed analysis of the redshifts of distant galaxies indicate that not only is the universe expanding, but its expansion at large scale is also accelerating. In particular, instead of a big crunch, our universe seems to be distant to a big rip, where galaxies, solar systems, planets and even atoms are destined to an infinite isolation. This is clearly incompatible with Einstein's original equations that suggest 
that the expansion should at least slow down. As I said in a previous video, this is an evidence that Einstein's original equation of gravity is wrong. But weirdly enough, it is also surprisingly consistent with Einstein's modified equation, the one that features this cosmological constant that was supposed to be his biggest blunder. Modern physicists have given a name to the source of the acceleration of the expansion of the universe. They now call it dark energy. That's just a name to refer to something that we really fundamentally do not understand. In fact, dark energy is one of today's greatest mysteries in physics, and some quantum mechanical attempts to crack it have shamefully failed. Yes, seriously, by many, many orders of magnitude. Ironically, today's leading explanation for dark energy lies in the cosmological constant that Einstein shamefully removed long after he first shamefully added it. Somehow, today's physicists now bet that Einstein's biggest blunder was not even a blunder. Hey, so I hope you've enjoyed this video. Now let me address uh, the comments of the previous video. Joseph uh, Hadzoink says, great video, thanks man. Uh, I love the idea of yet more complex theory of gravity. Uh, me too, but I usually don't understand them. Uh, I was always skeptical of dark energy and dark matter. It feels very ad hoc, ad hoc. and yes, it, it does. Uh, it does feel ad hoc, but I don't think that uh, we have any better explanations so far. Like for instance, in the case of the spinning of gravity and the dark energy uh, theory, uh, the dark matter theory, uh, there's uh, a modified the Newtonian dynamic theory to try to explain this. But actually, there you have found out that if they want to explain the spinning of galaxy within this theory, they still needed some dark matter, which renders this theory kind of, I don't know, like, you are adding few more assumptions and it's less nice and you still need the thing that you were trying to explain. I don't know, I'm not convinced by that, but I'm not an expert at all, so I'm not going to venture. Uh, what I would say is that uh, the beauty of Einstein's general relativity is above all else, it's naturalness. I love answering your questions and reading your comments, so please, please go below this video and tell me what you thought of this video and what questions you have. It gi would give me a lot of pleasure, uh, of satisfaction. To, to get your messages. So now that we've talked about uh, the destiny of the universe, next time we're going to talk about its origin. Uh, you might have heard that it was a big bang, but what convinced people of the big bang theory? Why do we believe that the universe originated with a big bang? Uh, and as you'll see, it has to do with what we can see in the darkness of the sky. Please think about it, subscribe to the channel, and I hope I see you next time.